Today I will try to make good use of this TL8662 Plus Universal Programmer, which is what we in Germany call an EPROM Brenner or an EPROM pro Programmer. And we will try to get the SpeedDOS C64 fixed and burn a fresh SpeedDOS EPROM. I have a C64 here which has a Plankton PLA and I want to do my own GAL PLA. So I had one of these but I fried it because I put it in the wrong way around. So these are toast and we have to burn fresh ones. And I will show you in this video how to do this. And then we'll put it inside and see if it works. So let's do this. So the first thing I want to do is to replace the Plankton PLA, which is a really, really good PLA replacement with the GAL PLA because I have some more C64s which have broken PLAs and I need more PLAs. And this is one of these boards which are super inexpensive. They just consist of um, two sockets, um, a few uh, pin headers, and then you put in two um, GAL chips, which we have here, which you can program with the Mini Pro. And there's a left and a right version to burn, and we will do that. And uh, then you put it in and uh, should be good to go. So let's see if that works. So to program these GAL PLAs, these are the dead ones. These give you an error. You just put it in like this. Make sure that you have the notch here and the notch here. And close it up. And then you go over to the software and burn this. And I started the programmer software. And the first thing to do if you want to program these GAL20V8B chips is to select them from the database. And for that you just click on select IC, put in the GAL20V8B, and that is from Lettuce, and you select the one on top here and just go select. And then you get all these ones. Then you have to download the files. I will provide a link in the description below. You just go load file and have my files here. These are JED files and you have an L and an R variant for the left and right chip. And we will go first with the left one. You just say open and you see now we have zeros and ones. And if you scroll through here, it's not just ones anymore. And to program this, you just click on program. You see it already recognized. That tells you to put it in like we just did with a notch to the notch. And the most important thing here is to remove the check mark at lock bit because if you do that, it wouldn't work. And then you just press program. And it takes a second or two. And this is real time. And there you go. So you have your left gal. And then you go and do the same with the right one. So put it in like this. Make sure that you have the notch here and the notch here. And close it up. So let's put in a new one. If I press read, say, see it's completely empty. It's just once. Now we again load the file. This time the right one. And this looks like just zeros, but if you scroll down, you can see there's content. And you go the same route, program, make sure lock bit is not checked. Program, oh, bad pins found, that's not good. Let's continue. I have no idea if this works now. So I got these from eBay for, I guess, five bucks or so. So let's try another one. And let's try the right file again. <coughs> Program lock bit is off. Yeah, and that one works just fine. Okay, so that is uh, how you program the GAL PLAs. And um, you just put them into the little uh, board and put that into the C64. We'll do this in a minute. 
So the PLA is put together, or the girl PLA rather. Uh, let's open this C64 back there, put it in and see if it works. So here's my trusted Plankton PLA, which works just fine in this machine. Let's pull it out and put the girl PLA in. And hopefully this will just work like that. So close it up and see if it does. Okay, the gel pill A is in, let's try it. Yeah, looks great. Seems to be working. Awesome. <coughs> so we have one gel PLA which is quite nice and I have a plankton replacement for spares which is good because as I said I have one C64 which I guess has a dead PLA, which is kind of the most common fault in the bread bins. Okay, so let's move on to the Speedos EEPROM. So in down here is the Speedos EEPROM, which we will pull from this. Okay, let's remember that it was this socket and this orientation. So we take this and we try to reprogram it. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I will read this one. I will try to get the exact speed DOS plus version of this EEPROM, compare it in the software and then burn a fresh one because I have quite a bunch of these uh, 2764 EEPROMs which I guess I have to delete but I have an EEPROM deleter or eraser so let's uh, see. So to read an EEPROM, you just put it into your EEPROM promer, EEPROM uh, burner programmer, and then you move to the software and just read it. Okay, next up, let's try to actually read the SpeedDOS EEPROM, and for that we have to change the type here, and we have a Mitsubishi, and it's a twenty-seven. 64, which we don't have here. So let me quickly check. I already had these. You can also take the TI, which is a TMS 2764, which is what I use to program these. So you can just type in TI or oh, Texas Instruments. Uh, where are they here? And then you go to the 27 TMS 2764, which should work. Select. And now let's do a read. And it did read. And here we have the content of that EEPROM. And it says here basic free speedos plus. This is what we see if we actually use this and the question is is this okay or is it not i have no idea which version of speedos this is and just say speedos plus so let me quickly check if i can find a speedos plus version somewhere online can't find the exact version that i have so i guess i will for now um read that version that I have and save it. Call this speedos plus unknown. So I guess the next thing to do is to use one of the existing files here, the kernel ensd, and put it on one of the EEPROMs. This could take a bit longer than the other version. Ooh, and it says programming failed on verify, which is not good. Okay, so that EEPROM seems to be defective. Let's try the next one. So in the end, I decided to give this machine a good clean. And as you can see, 
it's far from perfect, but it's much better than before. Didn't clean all the keys, just clean the F keys and the case, which was really dirty. And that burn mark is completely gone. Replaced a small flimsy reset switch with a nice big one. And I also cleaned the floppy, which wow, came out like brand new. It's really, this has to be the original color, which was hidden beneath the all the dirt. Left these on. Um, this is the device switch for eight and nine. And I noticed that if I switch here, the LED here, let me quickly show you that. If I switch here, the LED over here switches to red. And I thought, well, maybe this is some kind of kernel switch or on off switch inside the floppy. But then I tried with the switch on, I tried to load Batman. And uh, let me put this there. And uh, if the light is on, the uh, floppy speeder takes 21.23 seconds. And if it's off, it takes 21.3 seconds so that might actually be my old man reflexes uh, making the difference and if you switch uh, the floppy speeder off this takes one minute and 52 seconds and one minute and 52 seconds with the switch on or off so that switch that switch doesn't do anything right now so the only thing I can think of I also tried this with speedos or the speedos plus which was initially in the machine um, which doesn't work and just shows uh, scrambled characters. So yeah, that is how this machine turned out. It works with a uh, Eiswerder uh, floppy speeder, which is quite nice. You can see instead of taking one minute, 52 seconds, it takes 21 seconds to load Batman, which is quite cool. Yeah, so that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and until next time. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.